All right, so we're starting off here for this video on the tube because we need to display what this is doing prior to doing any work to it. That way when we get it fixed, if we get it fixed, we will know that the problem has been solved. So this is a 25 inch K7000. This is the, uh, the B version of the chassis. So there's two different versions. There's P447B uh, of the 19 inch and P538B of the 25 inch. And you can see visually that this is a brown board, a brown PCB versus the normal green one. And there are some physical differences, and I'll go over those when we get this back off the tube. Uh, but this is the 538B, is in Bravo version of the 7000. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about what this is doing. So I have it hooked up to the, uh, the tube here first so we can test it. And it says here that uh, the, uh, displays a shifted sync signal along with a scrambled image on the gray, black, white test mode on the test pattern generator. Uh, new flybacks installed, cap kit reflowed, video header pins, repaired a broken trace to the best of my ability. So we're going to see what it's doing right now. I have not turned it on yet, took it right out of the box, hooked it up and got this ready. So I don't, uh, I've not powered it up yet, but it is ready to go. Uh, so let's turn it on and see what it's doing. Then we can try and figure out if we can get it working. So here we go, one, two, three. It doesn't power up very energetically. I don't know what type of screen we're going to see here, if anything. Nothing yet. Oh, I don't know why, because I'm a dumbass. Let's turn this on. Oh. Ooh, that's not good. Uh, let's turn up our brightness. Whoa, Nelly. Yeah, that is not good. I assume our H hold doesn't make any difference. Uh, let's adjust our H hold. Oh yeah, well there's H hold, it's a little better, but that is not good. <laughs> and it's making a, a noise I never heard before. Well, yeah, I don't wanna run it too long. I don't want to run it too long like this. This makes me think flyback issue here. Um, but yeah, that's not good. Uh, we can try it with an actual, ooh, I just made a high pitched noise when it turned off. We can try an actual PCB here. Let's plug in K1 on. And I don't normally have it on when I run the TPG, so it's not on needlessly. Uh, but let's try an actual board just to see if it's any different. And let's try this, one, two, three. Oh, nope, no difference at all. You can hear it. That's not a good normal noise. And yeah, it's no different. Okay, well, let's see if we can't uh, figure out what's going on here. Okay, so now that we're back on the bench, let's give it a good look over. And one of the first things that I've noticed here, not that it matters, is that there's a, what appears to be a solder ball stuck to the side of the flyback. There's a little solder ball here that never seen that before uh, but all of the pots are good there's no broken main pots there's no broken neck board pots that's all good uh, one of the main differences here between the 538 Bravo and the 538 regular chassis is that the Bravo you'll notice that there's no place for D18 in here normally there is a diode that sits right here uh, right aft of the yoke header pins and you'll notice that it's not here on the Bravo version It's soldered to the bottom side of the board from the factory So that's a factory mod that they do because it still needs to be there, but they didn't engineer it onto the board So that's one main difference um, That's really just the easiest way to tell you have the Bravo version versus the regular version is the fact that It's got the, the uh, brown PCB Otherwise, it's pretty much the same and of course, D18 there is the main difference, but uh, get up there. you. Okay, so looking at this, it does look pretty in pretty good shape. Um, I don't see anything really missing. The, the caps are all replaced and obviously new flyback. Neck board's in good shape as well. Um, the main issue here is on the bottom side of the chassis, we've got some butchery, but not anything really that bad. Uh, of course, there's this big jumper here 
the jumpers from here all the way up to here because the trace is ripped off. You can see the trace is just, come on you, there you go, it's just ripped right off. So I'll probably have to, to fix that in a better way because uh, I don't know if R89 here is connected to these other points because it's connected to this point via the jumper but it could be not connected to this point and it could not be connected to this point. This from here to here, this could not be have continuity there. Uh, also R101, the most common plagued issue on these chassis is R101, this guy right here, this guy right there. Uh, you can look and see that the solder joint here is oxidized and cracked and dull. See how close I can get. Uh, right about there. You can see that it's cracked around the perimeter and it's dull and heat damaged and this is this is the most common issue. Uh, someone hit this one, this side, this leg of R101, but they did not hit that leg. So we'll have to fix that. And of course you see me in all my other videos on the 7000s. I just put a big solder jumper across here to aid in uh, heat dissipation so this won't happen again. So that was overlooked. Um, there are other issues like um, this here for one of the bipolar caps. The bipolar cap looks like someone's done a, a job of trying to get that to work, so we'll have to check that. Um, now the problem is I don't know if this was like this before the work was done or if it was like this after the work was done because it's important to know that if it was done, if all this happened after the work was done, then we can assume it was something that the person did. If it was like this before and they did all this work to try and fix it, then that actually helps us because we know it's not worse or it's nothing that they did. Um, looking at things here. Flyback pads all seem okay. Um, R96, I believe this is. That needs to be hit. Uh, we've got some bad solder joints here on the voltage regulator. There's a big cavity right there. Um, not that it really would be detrimental, but so things like that. So we're going to remove this jumper first here, and then we're going to fix this and see if it all has continuity, do some reflowing. Then we'll fix R101, and then go through and do some continuity tests on some other joints and make sure nothing is touching that shouldn't be, or make sure everything that's supposed to be touching is touching. And then we'll make sure that we have uh, all of our uh, power components check OK because we know it operates and works, but it could be a power component. And that high-pitched noise, uh, I, uh, it's very similar to the sound of an incorrect sync signal, but I've never heard it make that noise when it actually gets shut off. Now, IC2 here, now that I'm speaking as I'm looking at this, this capacitor here for IC2, it looks like somebody has added this the leg here from the capacitor when they changed it out directly to the the pin, but it doesn't appear that that needs to be like that. So we can scrape that trace off and just solder to the trace or put one big blob across there and we don't need this ugly uh, leg. Um, but okay, so let's start with this jumper. Let's just remove this jumper. I'm gonna turn my fan on here. Remove this jumper. Actually, you know, before we do, let's see if we have continuity across these pads. Always test your leads first. Okay. And we go here to here. That's okay. Here to here. Well, look at that. There's your problem. Here's R96. There's a resistor across here. R96, this guy right there. And as I suspected, if we go here to here, nothing. Here to here, nothing. Here to here, nothing. This is all one big trace. So from this point to this point to here, all of this, all of this area here has one leg that reaches across and goes to here. So we have no continuity. Uh, stay there, you. Okay. Nothing. As I suspected. Nothing. And look at that. We don't even have it from here to here. We have here to there to there. That's all good, but all of that should also ring to this, and should also ring to this. So, I'll bet you that's our problem right there. You know, and I'm curious. I think uh, let's fix let's fix this, and let's fix R101, 
and then try it again and see if it makes it any better because I'll bet you that this is our this is the cause of our entire problem right here um, that's good that's good it does not ring to there and it does not ring to there so let's assess our damage I'm glad I remembered to or thought about checking that before we took this off of here see if we can suck some of this solder up off of this thing yeah the whole trace is gone the whole pad oh come on you crappy camera the whole pad is gone and let's just get rid of that okay well yeah there's your problem uh, the whole pads gone and they soldered this wire to this component leg here but it did not have continuity to this or this just to this so we're gonna have to fix this and if we take R89 out of here that's that component is R89 let's just take R89 out of here well, here we go R89 is out and let's do a little bit more cleanup on this um, Yeah, you can see how this there's a pad here and this pad is supposed to be part of this whole trace here and this trace here but it's all gone so this is unfortunately a symptom of incorrect repair Okay, so we're gonna have, to, gonna have to figure out how we can fix this. Let's start by fix, scraping off some of this trace. All right. And That looks good. Now we can see about figuring out some way to work on this here. This may be a lost cause. That's probably going to break any minute. All right. We're going to have to figure out a way to add a component leg or something to this because that's going to be the cleanest way to do this. Let's uh, stabilize that real quick. Okay, I think that'll be all right. Now let's add some to here. That'll be okay. All right, so now let's see if we can grab a component leg, but first let's put R89 back in here. Will it stay there? It should stay there. Well, I'm going to have to hold it in place. There you go. Okay. All right, now, hmm, we're going to have to, let's 
flood this like this. And this, this is going to be a tough one here. You know what? Let's do it this way. Let's get rid of all of this. Junk that's in here. And scrape away some of this in here. Okay. Let's uh, see if that makes our job a little bit easier here. Yep. Well, there you go. How do you do? All right. Now all we have to do is put a component leg of some kind from here to here. And that should fix the problem. Then we'll tackle R101, that guy, and then we'll try it again. Just to see if our situation has improved. If it does, then everything else the way that it is is fine. We can just do some touch-up and call it a quick repair. Um, let's grab... I don't have... Oh, here we go. I'm going to use a component leg here off of a filter cap to give us a bit more beefiness here. And we'll go about like so. Still plenty of leg left for the filter cap. And what we'll do is we'll use our cutters here to kind of just hold it in place while we add this. Then we can add this to here, hold it down, and I think we got it, Sonny. Now, if we do our continuity test, we go from here to here. Hey, amazing! And then down this way. Two here, that's good. Here, here, and there. Well, imagine that. So one last thing to do here. Let's remove this old oxidized solder. Let's pop the leg through and let's just remove a little bit of the surface so it's nice and shiny again. Okay, pop it back through, add some fresh solder. Nice. Okay, now let's just add our bridge that we do. There we go. Ah! Oh, had it. There we go. All right. So, I don't really like this. It's like painting sometimes, you just got to get it right. I think, uh, I think that'll work. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't really like it, but it'll work for testing. So, okay. Um, I don't really see anything else that really requires reflow at the moment. Let's fix this uh, regulator leg. And I think that'll cover us for now. Let's test it now that we've fixed that problem. See if our issue is gone. If the issue is gone, I'll come through and do a little bit more cleanup, fix the things like this leg here that I mentioned before. And then uh, we will call it a success. I'm not going to bother with testing anything else because uh, after finding this problem, kind of changed the game plan of testing everything else. So I'm confident that this is either the direct cause or a major contributor to the cause. Uh, because basically R96 was out of circuit and everything else on this part is all out of circuit as well. So all of this compo all these components and R96 were both out of the circuit by having that not hooked up to the rest of it. So let's just go ahead and test it the way that it is now and see if it's any better. Okay, did that fix it? Let's find out. Turn that on. One, two, three. Ah, no more high-pitched noise. And, well, there you go. Let's turn our flyback down. Oh, it's all the way down. Oh, interesting. The flyback's all the way down. Oh, brightness all the way down, contrast. Yeah, contrast all the way down, brightness all the way down, and the flyback's all the way down. Oh, so we're making progress. You can see that we're making progress. So that was part of the problem. We basically have full raster. If I turn the flyback up, it does get brighter, but that's all the way down. Flyback's all the way down, brightness all the way down, contrast all the way down, and we still have raster lines. Something is overdriving the raster. Now, is it a C204 problem? Is it a neck board problem? Or is it a main board problem? can't say I ever encountered this problem before. Man, I was hopeful that was going to be all that was wrong with this. But at least now we have a solid image, but I'm just trying to think while I'm talking, why would this be happening? The raster is at full blast, even with it turned all the way down. And the flyback screen pot does change things, so it's not an issue of the flyback. I think there's something still wrong with the circuit here that's driving the raster to be fully on. Hmm. Well, uh, let me do some troubleshooting and see if I can figure this out or find something and then I'll come back and see uh, if it makes any difference. Alright, well, so somehow in the process of handling this after we did the repair here, we know we rang it all out and rang from all around here and also rang down to here. But somehow in the process of handling this, flexing it, installing it, the leg popped off here. So, if we look, uh, the leg that I soldered on here is now, uh, it's popped off. It's not hooked up to the trace anymore. So, we're going to have to fix it again. Turn my fan on, see if maybe we can uh, do something like this, maybe? Let's uh, see if we can... I, was, I should have done this the first time around because I was skeptical of that trace actually staying intact like that. It was pretty brittle for me scraping around on it. But Okay. Going to have to hold this down. And yes, that is hot. You know, I need to actually probably use... Do it this way. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay, let's test it one more time. Yes. All right. So I think that was the, the issue. So let's uh, get it back on the tube and test it for a third time because 
obviously with that being out of circuit down here to this, what does that trace, or what does that pad go to? That goes to right here, and that's part of, let's see, that goes across the resistor, which comes back around this way, across this resistor, which comes back around here to our brightness pot. So basically brightness is out of circuit. Um, or the transistor wasn't turning on. Uh, Q8 is what that appears to be going to. So let's uh, hook this back up after finding that and see if it works this time. All right, so round three, let's turn the TPG on. And the flyback and brightness contrast are still all the way down. So hopefully if that fixed it, uh, we should not get an image. And then we can adjust from there. So here we go, one, two, three. All right. So we're hoping to not see an image. And we indeed do not see an image. So that appears to be the solution to that. Okay, My, I made a mistake. We're all human. It happens. All right. So now we'll turn our fly back up until we get raster lines. Ha ha. Back down until they just go away. There we go. And now let's do brightness until the background's no longer black which is right there. Back down till it's just black. There we go. Contrast as needed. Contrast works right about there. Let's adjust our focus right there. I need to do some convergence on this tube. All right. Well, there you go. Um, let's get the tripod set up and hook up an actual PCB and get some adjustments made and see how well we can make this look. Okay, so we're gonna try the uh, MK1 PCB. If it starts giving me hold issues, then we'll switch to the Rampage World Tour, but let's uh, turn it off. And let's turn off our test pattern generator, hook up our JAMA cable, and here we go. Okay, uh, H position. Not sure if I want to mess with that till we get. Yeah, it's way too far to the left. Let's do. Uh, that's about good there. Uh, you know what? Let's get past this and get to a screen with the fighters on there. Oh, we're too blue, but not a big deal. Looks pretty good right there for colors. Uh, a little bit more green. Oh. All right, anyway, so, okay, let's do uh, some adjustments here. We've got to do H position first, which needs to be about there. Okay, let's make sure we can adjust our width. Uh, absolutely. I'll leave it about there. Move position again. Okay. Vertical size. Vertical position. Well, boys and girls, how does that look? We are too red, turn it back down a bit, okay. A bit too green. A little less blue. That uh, looks pretty good right there. Not so much in the camera, but in person it's, I don't know why the camera doesn't pick up the colors very well, but in person it's pretty much dead on perfect. Um, and like the it, Red is very well established in person, but in the camera it looks rather dim, but it's just, trust me, in person it's perfect, in camera it's a bit more dim than it actually looks on, in person. But anyway, yeah, so it looks like we just had a simple case of bad rework. Uh, so I'm going to take this back off the tube, I'm going to do a little bit of my own rework, fixing some solder joints and doing some testing and doing continuity tests. Obviously everything is working fine, but I want to uh, do a little bit more testing do some more strategic reflow, fix a couple of pads, things like that. And then I also need to put some um, solder mask over that uh, repair that I did. 
uh, but I'll do all that, come back, show that off, and then I will just call the video complete, and then I'll do some actual uh, more testing after doing more work to it to make sure I didn't do anything wrong or screw something up. I'll do all that work uh, off camera. Uh, but after all that, we'll consider this done. Uh, but for now, yeah, it's working. So there you go. So I'm going to cut away. Uh, and when I come back, I'll show all of the rework that I did, and then uh, we'll call it a successful repair. So um, one moment. All right, so all of the rework is done. Uh, there were a couple uh, solder joints when I tried to re uh, reflow them. They just basically disintegrated, and they were only held, being held on by, with solder by a little bit. <laughs> so I had to fix this joint here as well. Uh, ended up putting another little bit of solder across all three of these because this joint here was basically falling apart It was only being held on by a little bit. So I got that fixed. Uh, I fixed the bipolar cap here That was all kind of messed up. I got uh, the uh, Rest of the entire chassis all reflowed for anything and everything that possibly needed it. That was even a little bit You know oxidized all of its good uh, I got the uh, mask put over all of the rework here. Uh, I didn't cover in the solder blobs, not really any reason to, but all of the exposed extra leg here and the pieces I scratched off are all cleaned up. I reflowed some of the flyback, added more solder to the header pins for the uh, yoke, uh, things like that. So everything is now done. I'm going to do some more testing off camera, make sure I didn't make any mistakes or cause more damage, and uh, I'll let it do a normal burn-in time which uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. So otherwise, yeah, this ended up being an issue of uh, bad rework. So always make sure when you're doing your rework that you test your uh, traces for continuity. Make sure double check and triple check all of your work. Make sure you didn't do any uh, damage like uh, instance that we had here, what we saw here. Uh, otherwise, yeah, um, hopefully you learned something. Thank you very much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next repair.